This larger one's a female, and the smaller one's a male. That's Stephen Paisley, a retired electrician who's found a second calling, mason bees. There's a, there's a full adult bee in each one of those. Paisley was out at Willamette Valley Vineyards, that's south of Salem, getting their mason bee house ready for the season. As soon as the temperature gets up to 55, those eggs will hatch, and the mason bee life cycle will begin. The female will come here and find this channel and go all the way to the back, and she goes, this is a good channel. I can, I can build my nest here. And then she'll fly away and get a little mud, and she'll build a little tiny wall all the way back here. Mason bees got their names because they use mud for their nests. They excavated a little bit here, but they've, a lot of mud's been removed from right in this area. That goes back four inches or so. Paisley has built and helps maintain dozens of mason bee boxes, and his enthusiasm is hard to miss. I mean, every day I go out there and watch, you know, watch her go in, do this, and, and uh, oh, come look, look at this, this one's almost full. And it was just, you know, it was just entertaining. But beyond their ability to entertain, bees play a crucial role in our food supply. There's a lot of seed production in Oregon, and bees are integral to the production of that, that seed. Anywhere That's Andoni Melothopoulos, a horticulture professor at Oregon State. From alfalfa to carrots to cherries to Hermiston's famous watermelons, he said bees are essential to all kinds of different agriculture. Really having a, a large supply of bee colonies is critical for all those crops. So it was concerning when, about 15 years ago, many honeybee colonies started to collapse. But since then, honeybee numbers have rebounded. The one thing to say with honeybee colonies in general is stocks have actually been climbing. So there was a period, uh, you know, five years ago, it was at its low point, and then the colony numbers have increased. Now, that doesn't mean there's nothing to worry about. Beekeepers are constantly battling pests, disease, and an increasingly dry landscape caused by climate change that can make collecting nectar hard for the insects. And honeybees are easy to keep tabs on, but Oregon's nearly 800 species of wild bees that's a different story. For many of them, there's so little data we can't even track if there's been a decline. Mothopolis said that perhaps we should be less worried about whether bees are disappearing and more concerned that we don't know whether bees are disappearing. What is clear, though, is that bee habitat is shrinking. And while building a mason bee house or planting a garden full of bee-friendly flowers is a step in the right direction, Mothopolis said that to protect the future of bees and our food supply, we need to think bigger. The biggest thing that people can do, I think, is um, really try and support farmers that and other land managers who are trying to put big tracks of flowering plants in the landscape. Utility companies, golf courses, uh, forest companies, like that's where we need it. Mm -hmm.